Hello everybody, my name is Zen, and welcome to our tutorial video on how to play the Star Wars tabletop RPG from Fantasy Flight Games. This video will give you a brief overview of how to play the game, that way you can either follow along with our Star Wars RPG series and or go play the game for yourself. Fantasy Flight has broken the Star Wars RPG down into three different themes, each with their own core rulebooks and additional source books that add new content. You have Force and Destiny, Edge of the Empire, and Age of Rebellion. The names of each give a good idea of what themes they focus on, and you should choose one that's interesting to everyone playing. While each of these separate books have their own content, they're all designed to be compatible with each other, so feel free to mix and match if that's how you prefer to play. The game itself is played asymmetrically. You have one game master and several players. The players are the heroes in the story, deciding what they want to do and where they want to go in the galaxy. They roll special dice to determine if certain actions, such as shooting an enemy with a blaster or charming a hut, are successful. The GM controls the world and the NPCs that the players are interacting with. They help guide the players in the right direction and keep things interesting by providing combat or social encounters. The GM also helps determine the difficulty of player actions, helping to see if they succeed at a task or not. Each character has a set of six characteristics, brawn, agility, intellect, cunning, willpower, and presence. The characteristics determine how good someone is at something. A character with five cunning can talk their way out of most situations, whereas a character with four brawn may really just enjoy punching things. The max that any of these stats can be is six. Each of these characteristics help determine how many of each dice you are rolling. There are six types of primary dice. These can be broken down into the positive dice and the negative dice. First, the positive dice. You have the green ability dice, the yellow proficiency dice, and the blue boost dice. You roll green dice based on your characteristics and yellow dice based on how proficient you are in certain skills. For example, a smuggler named Quinn wants to sneak past a guard without being seen. He takes his agility characteristic, which is four, and prepares that many green dice. Then he looks at a stealth skill, which is rank one, and upgrades that many green ability dice to yellow proficiency dice, removing the green dice in the process. He is left with a dice pool of three green and one yellow. He would roll these dice to determine if he succeeds or not. The blue boost dice can be added based on different situational effects. Is there a heavy fog in the city where the guard is, making it hard for him to see? Add a boost dice. Maybe another player is causing a distraction to help Quinn out. Add another boost dice. Then you have the negative dice. You have the purple difficulty dice, the red challenge dice, and the black setback dice. You add purple dice based on how difficult something is. In this example, the guard is on high alert and it will be hard to sneak by him. So the GM tells Quinn to add three purple dice to his dice pool. This guard is also specially trained in spotting things that are out of place, so one of those purple dice are upgraded to a red challenge dice. On top of that, there are several security cameras in the area, so Quinn would also add two black setback dice. Before we roll any dice in this example, let's explain the symbols on the dice and what they mean. On the positive dice, you have the success symbol, and on the negative dice, you have the failure symbol. When you roll your dice, each failure cancels out one success, and any remaining successes or failures that are not canceled out determine if something succeeds or not. You also have the advantage and threat symbols. These cancel each other out as well, and the remaining result determines the flavor of your success or failure, which we'll discuss in just a moment. The final symbols are the triumph and despair symbols. They only appear on the yellow proficiency and red challenge dice, and these represent critical successes or critical failures. Going back to Quinn's dice pool, let's imagine he rolls and gets three successes, two failures, five advantage, and two threat. After canceling each other out, you're left with one success and three advantage. In this case, Quinn would have successfully snuck by the guard and the remaining advantage resulted him also sneaking another player with him. However, Quinn in an alternate reality rolled his dice and got two successes, four failures, three advantage, and one threat. After canceling, Quinn was left with two failures and two advantage. In this case, Quinn is spotted by the guard, but thinks fast and acts like he is lost. 
the guard reluctantly gives Quinn directions on how to get back to where he came from instead of arresting him. This should give you a good idea of how skill checks work in the Star Wars RPG, and how unique dice can help build the narrative of what's happening in the game. There is one final dice we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the White Force dice. This dice is often used in combination with force powers from Force and Destiny, but it's also used at the start of every session regardless of what rule set you're playing with. At the start of every session, each player rolls one force dice to determine how many destiny points you start with. The players control light side points, and the GM controls the dark side points. These destiny points can and should be frequently used by the players and GM. Destiny points have many powerful functions, such as upgrading an ability dice in your pool during a roll to a yellow proficiency dice, or activating powerful signature abilities. But destiny points can also provide narrative effects to your game as well. Did the players forget to pick up some additional ammunition before heading out on a mission, and now find themselves without ammo in the middle of enemy blaster fire? One of the players can spend destiny point to remember that they did in fact pick some ammo up and that it's in the cargo bay of their ship which they're currently taking cover under. Be mindful though, because your GM can also use dark side destiny points to do similar things for your enemies. Every time a light side point is used, it's flipped over to an available dark side point for the GM. Likewise, anytime a GM uses a dark side point, it becomes a light side point. When it comes to combat, you use similar rules and concepts for building dice pools, but the difficulty is determined by how far an enemy is from you, and the damage of a weapon can be boosted based on how many additional successes you have on a roll. There are five ranged bands to consider in combat, engaged, short, medium, long, and extreme. Most weapons have restrictions on how far they can effectively be used, and melee weapons are almost always going to be used in the engaged range band unless they're being thrown at an enemy. Every character has a wound threshold and a strain threshold. Exceeding either of these can cause the character to become unconscious. An unconscious character that is attacked automatically rolls for a critical injury, which can result in either maiming or even death. Vehicular combat also uses similar rules. Vehicles have their own way of tracking damage against them, hull trauma, and system strain. Both vehicles and individuals have ways of making it harder to hit them and reducing damage done. Defense will add black setback dice to an attacker's dice pool, whereas soak or armor will reduce the damage that you're taking. There are a huge amount of additional rules for combat, including critical injury charts and how to determine how hard another vehicle is to hit based on your relative speed to them, however we will not be covering that here. Combat itself is turn-based. A character has one maneuver and one action they can do on their turn. Maneuvers include moving or aiming, and actions are attacking or performing a skill check. You can swap your action for another maneuver in a situation where you just want to perform two maneuvers instead. In order to track whose turn it is, you need to roll for initiative at the start of combat. In Star Wars, you either roll cool or vigilant skills. You roll cool if you're prepared for the fight, and vigilance if you are unprepared. There are some cases where a group of players will turn a corner and bump into a group of enemies, both sides are surprised and would roll vigilance. Once everyone has rolled, they are added to a turn tracker based on how well they rolled. Unlike other RPGs, in Star Wars you add a player to the turn tracker as simply a PC and enemies as an NPC. When it's a PC's turn, all of the players determine who will go in that initiative slot for that round and then that player takes their turn. NPCs act in a similar fashion, and players should be aware that an enemy that's in a good position may take their turn before an enemy that isn't. With this system, rolling poorly doesn't mean that you're always stuck going last, and players should work together to determine who acts first and last in any given round. In order to fully understand the nuance of the rules, I would suggest reading through whichever core rulebook you have. There are many things we did not discuss in this video, but you should now be prepared enough to either watch our Star Wars RPG series on our channel, or go make a character and start your own Star Wars adventure. With that being said, thank you very much for watching, and we shall see you guys next time.